Uh, hey, what's up guys? I wanted to show you guys a cool uh, controller testing uh, method I'm using. Um, at the moment I'm only testing input and then, you know, the analog accuracy. Uh, I apologize for the dogs, those are the neighbors. Um, and then so let's get started. Uh, we're going to be using the Mr. FPGA for this and using the snack adapter as well as um, a Brook Wingman PS2. So let's uh, the first thing we're gonna do is load up the PlayStation Core. <clears throat> All right, I uh, didn't enable any sound, so it's just gonna be my voice. We don't need sound for this anyway. Uh, so. The first thing you're going to notice is that we're going to load an EXE first. But uh, let's double check that we're on uh, snack port 1. Because uh, that's what uh, we're going to be using for the controller test. Now we go to load EXE. Oh, it's trying to focus. Uh, and then I got it under... Personally, I have it under the folder testers. So I have 240p test suite, uh, both the uh, hardware and emulator version, and then we got pad test. Uh, this one's an EXE. Now we loaded, and we're in the software. Alright, so there's nothing connected because I, ha I haven't uh, wired the adapter up yet. So uh, this is what's going to be going into the PlayStation snack port. Uh, so... For those of you guys that uh, don't know, the snack port uh, basically reads controllers the same way the original PlayStation uh, would. Uh, so it's not going to have like, uh, you know, the modern buttons like the home button, uh, screenshot button. It's not going to be aware of any of that. Um, so we're only going to be limited to whatever inputs the PlayStation controller had. Uh, Alright, so now it's going to go in. Uh, let's see. Oh, well... I guess I didn't show this part, but here's the uh, snack adapter. It connects through a uh, serial port, which um, uses the same USB um, interface. Uh, so here it goes. And then we're going to connect this. As you can see, the uh, mister uh, recognized it right away. Now, some modern controllers are going to require um, more power than the uh, device or the hardware is going to be able to provide. So, uh, we need an external micro USB adapter. I'm using the one that came with the Raspberry Pi. So, it might be a little bit over or less. But, uh, it's enough that it works uh, with Nintendo Switch controllers, which are power hungry for some reason uh, you won't see a change in the light uh, so the best way to test if this works is uh, we'll, we'll see right now hold on let's see next we're gonna connect the um, USB-C and you can see that the um, light changed on the uh, Brook PS2 uh, this controller has drift, which is uh, what I wanted to show you guys, so... As you can see, the D-pad works. The triggers and the shoulder buttons. The face buttons work. Start, select. And then, um, home button, what it does on the Brook Wingman is it activates the analog, but... The pad test 1.0 software uh, automatically goes back to analog once you click it. So you tap it, it goes to digital for a half second and then goes back to analog. Anyway, another thing you could test is the rumble motors. You can probably hear it through the microphone. It sounds like a loud buzzing sound. Uh, if the small uh, motor doesn't uh, activate, you probably got to reconnect the 
adapter. So there it is. I reconnected it and you might be able to hear it. Uh, I can certainly feel it. And then so left stick is the, uh, the big mortar. Right stick is usually the small mortar. And now let's see the right analog stick. Um, as you can see it actually, it actually uh, accurately tracks the uh, analog stick movement. I guess the uh, PlayStation analog stick didn't have a lot of range, so if you use a modern controller, you can see that, let's see, I'm going to do it from the left, um, you can see that there's still some, like it reaches 128, and then there's still room to um, activate the trigger, the analog stick, uh, and then so we got drift on the left stick, and we're going to test how that looks on here. So, you know, we wiggle oh, it, come on. wiggle the right one, there it is, you can see that um, the left analog stick has some, Every it uh, just doesn't center again, nope, it's trying to prove me wrong today, and, wow. Anyway, the uh, drift is intermittent and comes and goes. Alright, so now we're going to test out another controller. Uh, let's unplug this one. Uh, as you can see, the controller didn't go away because the Brook Wingman PS2 uh, stays registered as the controller, I guess. Now, let's see. We're going to do Xbox. And then you can see it automatically uh, shows that it wasn't centered. Um, and that's kind of weird because it doesn't center, but uh, in a game it doesn't... I haven't seen it uh, affect me in any way. Uh, there's no drift on these, so they'll center every time. Or at least as close to center as possible. Uh, now on these, let's see. So we're going to do the left. We already reached uh, 128, which is a uh, PlayStation DualShock 1's maximum range. And we still have, uh, you know, space again. That's it. Alright. And then triggers. Oh, yeah, for the uh, Xbox. Um, since there's no analog triggers on PlayStation 1, you know, uh, as soon as it registers, you don't have to go too far. To register an input on the trigger uh, shoulder buttons are digital so they register right away select start I don't know what this button does uh, I don't own an Xbox but I assume it's also the share button and then the home does the same thing as with the switch where it changes to digital for half a second and then it goes back and then uh, let me see if I can get a PlayStation 5 controller to test. Uh, so we're going to borrow my brother's controller real quick and then let's see. Oh, it looks like it took a lot of power. You saw the uh, controller kind of disappeared there. Uh, you know, same thing as the Xbox. It doesn't... It centers at zero and negative one. So let's test out the rumble mortar. That's a big one. The small one. Uh, same thing with the trigger. You don't have to go all the way down. It activates and then you can still have uh, this much space. Uh, let's see, I'm assuming this is start. You can see a register and then select. 
Uh, there's like a little button here. I don't know what it does here. Yep. And then the home button, the PlayStation logo does the same thing. Uh, the touchpad or the sense, whatever it's called, doesn't do anything. Uh, there's no uh, gyroscope. So let's see, does this one do the full range? We're going to go to the left again. Uh, we reach 128 with enough uh, wiggle room. And that's pretty much it. Uh, so once again, the setup is a Mr. FPGA. Uh, we're using the PlayStation Core. Um, and I don't think it matters what version, because you don't need a... Um, like, the interface is pretty simple. And then you need the PlayStation Snack Adapter and a Brook Wingman PS2. Uh, I strongly recommend getting an external um, micro USB adapter uh, for power. Uh, specifically because some controllers are power hungry. And they won't always, um, you know, get enough power to work. Uh, that'll usually be the, um, as you can see, the PlayStation 5 controller pretty much blanked out the screen for a bit. And the Nintendo Switch controller also requires a lot of power, so... Just for peace of mind, get an external uh, power adapter for the micro USB. And that's pretty much it. That's my modern controller testing setup. Let me know what you guys think. Peace.